Good morning, my YouTube followers. How are we today? I, uh, I got a tractor to work on. So, first thing we're gonna do is go outside and drive it around and try and make it throw the air codes that it has been throwing. And in the process of doing so, we're gonna be running the tractor and letting it warm up so we get the oil all warmed up and we can come in here and change the oil after that. Ah, we'll see if that works or not, uh, with getting the code anyway. I know it will warm the oil up. And, uh... Then we'll do that, and then maybe this afternoon, as much as I don't want to, uh, we'll probably end up power washing, hopefully outside. It should be warm out again. Uh, yesterday was a nice day in the afternoon, and I think today will be as well, although we had um, we had what they called freezing fog this morning, so it's still pretty cold out, and everything is frosty and foggy, and it's got some warming up to do. So what has been happening, it happened to me once, and it happened to Dad the other day when he was driving his tractor, when you would push the clutch, well, there's, there's something, but it doesn't tell me what, just that it's beeping. But we would push the clutch in, and it would throw all kinds of codes, and then you would toast to a stop, and you would let the clutch out, and you wouldn't move. But it appears to be intermittent random problems, so yeah, we'll have to see what we can figure out here. Okay. I got it. Record all these codes that are flashing. Rear axle speed sensor parking lock sensor failure. Rear axle speed park lock sensor failure. There was another one. I've been driving around for a while, but it finally came up. So what do we do? We put it in park. Can we clear this? Oh, what's that? TCU receiving false data from PLC. C dealer. I don't know what that means. Oh, we're going again. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think I got all the codes that it was throwing recorded. There were a picture of them. I'm going to let that run out there for a minute while we clean up the floor here. It's a little, it's a little dirty still from the combine. Somewhere I've got a scraper. Okay, that's a little better. Let's bring our tractor in. All right, um, I tried to put our loader the best I can find to put it out of the way while still being semi-safe to work around. We don't have a fold-down cylinder stop on this, so I didn't really want to put it straight up in the air without any kind of safety stop, so I put the fork straight down and that should work. So now we've got to pull this plug to Drain the engine oil. Let's see if I can do this without getting oil all over myself. It's unlikely. Nah, not too. Cool. Two pails will do it. I figured. Yeah. Actually, there's more in there than I thought there was. I'm gonna look up the capacity and see, but I want to let it drain for a while. Okay, so uh, there's a way to go into this display and look up all of the codes that are stored in this tractor. Um, so there's underneath here, there's a little trigger switch. If you hold this for five seconds, it goes into diagnostics mode. And then on your little turn signal clicker over here, you can go through all of the ad uh, devices and addresses on the tractor. What is that light from? Sorry. Oh, it's this one. There. Um, so like this BIF, I have no idea what device BIF is, but let's say we want to select that. Then we come down here to our turn signal switch, click that, and it enters it. And then I can scroll through all of the different addresses. And this first one here, not this one, this one shows me all the codes, so I'll click it again, and maybe, there we go, it brings up all the codes. So now we've got this BIF device, address 001, I don't know what SPN means, I don't know what FIM means, I don't know what OC means, but these numbers, I also don't know what it means, but they mean something. So I can go through that, and then I can... Scroll through if there are multiple codes, and um, 
And then we can look these up or call the dealer and they can look them up and tell me what all those mean. So I wrote them all down. Some of them, some of them are maybe serious. Some of them may be absolutely nothing. Like, like complete nothing. Um, let me see if I can find any of them in here. Now, they don't have any of them listed in here as to what they actually mean, but it could be something as simple as um, uh, a turn signal light bulb is burnt out, or it could be something major. So uh, I'm going to try and Google some of these numbers, see if I can find anything on them. Then I'll call the dealer, and I'll give them those codes that specifically popped up when the transmission was having issues and uh, see what needs to be fixed. I think it's a sensor somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a sensor that, one, I can get to, uh, two, that I could change, um, or, you know, exactly how it would work. So we need to, we need to look all that up. Just looking at the book to see what we need to do. And, uh, with only 120 hours on it, um, since last year, we don't need to do much. Now the oil didn't get changed last year. That was on seven, two of 19 and we're at 244 hours on the engine oil. So we're, we're right on there. I think it's a 250 hour service interval, although I think you can stretch it to 375. Um, but two years is, is long enough so um yeah basically we just need to do that and clean it up we're not going to change fuel filters we're not going to change air filters we'll probably get the engine air filter out and look at it but i doubt we need to do anything with it really uh it's hold on the engine air filter is one of these dumb ones that you can't really clean very good so we can attempt to blow it out but there's no yeah i don't know if Not much. It's probably not that dirty. It really hasn't run in much dust. So we'll see what we can do. There's our oil filter. And I don't think we're going to take any other ones. We don't need to do transmission, hydraulic, air. Yep. Just one. Cool. Chances that I get oil everywhere. <sighs> wow. Maybe. These hoses weren't in the way. Ah, dang it. I did pretty good. Over here in our oil room, we've got this fancy little oil draining spot. So, these ones have been sitting there since we took them off the combine. We can throw these ones away. That one's one of those filters that the John Deere printers did an awfully darn good job. It boggles my mind how often the John Deere logo faces out on their filters. Not always. But you would be really surprised. Like, yeah. So, all right, we gotta get a marker. Okay, air filter, or sorry, air filter. Oil filter has changed. And she's pretty well done dripping, so we're gonna put the plug back in, put new oil in it. 22 quarts, it says. Actually, it says five and a half gallons, but that's 22 quarts. Looks like I got a fuel line leaking. Uh, this is, this is a fuel filter. I assume there's some sort of a little pump in there, or maybe it's a return line. This is the main uh, fuel pump, injection pump. And this is a, like a braided fabric fuel hose. It's, ooh, let's not drip dirt right into the oil fill there, but yeah, it's like a braided fabric with a rubber liner. I think it's breaking down. I should probably see if I can get a new hose to put on there. Oh man, guys. So I called I called to order this, this hose because I looked it up and and on one spot it said it was 40 some dollars for that hose. I thought that can't be right. So then I punched the number in somewhere else and it said it was 22 cents. And I thought, well, that can't be right either. So I figured they probably sold it by the foot or something along those lines. No, they sell it by the inch. It is 22 cents per inch. So I took a rough measurement. We'll get close enough. And they're going to send it down with the rest of my parts for that. But it doesn't sound like they're going to get that stuff until Monday. So, we'll wait. Okay, well, for the general maintenance and service aspect of stuff, that pretty well takes care of it, changing the uh, engine oil. So, um, I'm going to go eat lunch. It's lunchtime. When we come back, we're going to take this outside and power wash and get it all cleaned up. It won't take that long, and we are not going to be very thorough. Do you know why? Because as soon as I am done with this tractor, Dad's gonna take it out to the fence rows and play in the mud with it. So there ain't no point in spending a bunch of time getting it all nice and pretty and clean. But we're gonna clean it up. We're gonna look things over. We'll clean the cab out and get all the stuff out of it that we don't need to be in there. And uh, then we gotta fix that sensor and fix our headlights. That's the other two big things, but that's probably tomorrow projects, not today. 
Okay, I am back from lunch. It's time to power wash. Uh, I don't want to do this, but I suppose do it now while it's 40, 45 degrees outside rather than next week when it's 30. So we'll get the tractor moved out, power washer set up, do this quick. Well, a small little tractor is definitely a lot easier than a combine, let me tell you. Uh, it's been maybe a half hour. I've gotten most of it. I want to turn the front tires all the way in one direction. We'll get behind them as best we can, then we'll flip them the other direction, raise the loader up so I can get in there a little bit better. And it looks like I need to get... This side's not too bad, but I noticed over here on this side, there's some dirt back in there that we need to get to. So, um, yeah, yeah, this, this is going to go fast here. It's done. Well, I'm trying to clean my concrete off. I have sprung a leak. O-rings melted. We even got the good O-rings from the power washer store. Place that sells these that are supposed to be heat proof. They are not. They melt. I'm almost done. I can finish without getting too wet. I called up to the John Deere dealer to ask them about uh, those codes and what might be causing our trouble and he agreed that it is likely a transmission speed sensor. Said that uh, basically the codes mean that the, that the transmission speed sensor is not giving the same data back that the tractor thinks that it should be getting based on what gear and RPMs or ranges and all of that stuff. Uh, so. He said that's the place to start in changing it. And it is somewhere in there, which is gonna be fun. <sighs> yeah, he's ordering me one. Should hopefully get it on Monday. We might have, to, uh, might have to roll this tire out or even take this tire off to be able to get in there, but we'll see. There is also always the possibility that it's a wire harness or something that leads to that sensor that is rubbed through or shorted or a broken wire or something along those lines. So um, we'll have to inspect that all when we dive into that. Well, I let the tractor dry off here for a while. Um, successfully killed the rest of the afternoon working on my house plans and ideas and stuff on the computer. So, um, but. Anyway, we're going to get back to this tomorrow. We'll get the interior cleaned out. We'll see if we can't get uh, the rear lights working. And uh, uh, maybe we'll wax it, wash the windows and all of that good stuff. And then Monday when we get our parts, we can replace that uh, sensor and, and that fuel line. So um, I guess that's going to be it for today. I'm going to go home. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, I was just took a minute to go through some of the comments on yesterday's video. And... Uh, uh, got a lot of comments about house stuff and uh, just wanted to take a second and say I've been intentionally pretty vague with the details on this because we're still really early in the process and um, while I appreciate all of your comments and suggestions and ideas and, and I do, uh, if I took all of them I'd be building well over a half a million dollar house with, you know, uh, yeah, it just, it's not feasible and for everybody that said yesterday, I'd put my back patio on the east side of the house away from the sun. Well, that's that's the road. So I, it, there's only so much I can do, right? It's got to fit the lot. It's got to fit our situation, and it's got to fit our budget. Uh, and so we're we're figuring it out. We'll get there. But uh, thanks for all the feedback on that as well. Uh, if you have any questions, comments about today's stuff, I know we didn't accomplish a whole lot in Washington tractor. What did we do this morning? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, change the oil. Yeah, we did do a little bit. Okay. Um, but that's the way things go in the winter. Sometimes we have really good productive days. Sometimes we just get a little bit of stuff done and call it good. Um, but So, anyway, like, subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it. And, like I said, comments, questions down below. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody.